Okay, so our system is completely installed and operational, and this is our sump pump right here in the back lawn. So we have our catch basin as our collection point. Now you could have simply installed your sump pump and basin back here in this bed and used it as your collection point and your discharge uh, point. However, you see we have a lot of utility lines, AT&T, Cox, the biggest one being was the electric line that we're in right through here. So the depth to bury our sump pump didn't allow for that, so we went with a catch basin to collect our, collect our water and discharge it to our sump pump, which will then lift up the water and discharge it to our drain line that we have that are now next in about right here some, some point. And that line shoots out all the way to the front of the property. This is the sump pump that we'll be using for this particular drainage system. This is a Zoller M98. It is a half horsepower um, sump pump with a 15 foot power cord and I've already gone ahead and put on my Mel threaded adapter. This is a one and a half inch Mel threaded adapter and you simply want to hand tighten that in there and that is what that looks like for you for those of you who are not sure. Simply hand tight that in there and then I cut my riser. Make sure when you cut your riser that you give yourself clearance from the float bar right here because you need to have at least a quarter inch clearance. I'm gonna throw everything on the ground so that you need that clearance right there so that you can slip your check valve onto your riser. Here we have the, the check valve. The check valve comes as a complete unit with the quick hubs, your hose clamps, everything, and you simply set it on here, then tighten your hose clamps. Make sure that you install it in the proper fashion. It needs to be installed with the arrows pointing up. That's the flow of water. The pump pulls the water in and sends it up. Simply slide this on here like so so I don't want to do this when I go into the pump there we go we'll do it like that get it nice and secure tighten it up be careful not to over tighten this one's already tight and then you also tighten it up here. This is tightening it to the check valve and then this one will tighten to our outlet pipe. Next thing we need to do is we need to drill our weep hole. And this is a 1 8 drill bit, bit and make sure when you drill this hole that you drill it as um, horizontally as possible. Want to get it straight. Don't want to have it at an angle. It'll shoot the water out all crazy. And the reason we need a weep hole is to prevent um, airlock and it can actually um, lock up your sump pump. So this is a um, relief valve for the air so to speak so that's why we want to do this there we go and our check valve is to ensure that whenever 
because when we push when the pump pushes the water out you're going to get some water that flows back to the pump and this has a little trap door in there that only opens in the direction of the water flow and then when then it shuts back down to prevent water coming back down into your system which prevents your sump pump from basically recycling itself and burning itself up by continuously running so you've got to have the check valve okay so this is important just want to make sure hopefully everybody knows this your inlet pipe has to come in above this guard float right here the float guard okay or stop whatever you want to call it so your pipe when it comes into your basin has to be above it so that's where we're at now when we set this in here I'm not going to do that right now but when we set the basin in there it's a good three and a half inches below grade this is our grade right here in order to come in at that height above the sump we're a good three and a half maybe four inches below grade so what I did is I've gone ahead and got another sump basin and I'm simply going to cut it and slide it in to the other one so that it'll bring everything to grade it'll prevent causing a tripping hazard in the yard and it'll just look better some on the bottom I'm using a one-fourth drill bit the drill bit size doesn't matter if you use a bigger drill bit then maybe you need less holes I went up to the about the 10 inch mark holes all the way around and I put three on the bottom and here's why we put the holes in there so when I came in this morning, this hole was, I don't know, maybe five inches deep with water and I got all the water out. The hole was dry. I went to lunch, came back, we're starting to get water into the hole again and that tells us he has a water table, a high water table in this area. It'll come up when there's a lot of rain. So we don't put the holes in here, we'll flood our sump basin out of the ground. So. That'll allow that water to go into our sump basin, pump will pick it up and shoot it out. So now the next step with our basin is to wrap it in a geotextile cloth and that's what I'm going to do now. Six inch. I still had to put two together. Those won't stop running. Get a piece on the bottom here. Once again.
it don't have to look pretty just get it wrapped around there wrap it once wrap it twice get it around it you're good to go stick it in a hole let's go Okay, so I know everybody likes to see step-by-step -step, um, procedures, but unfortunately the battery on the camera died, so I had to go recharge it, but I had to keep going. It's getting kind of late in the day, but look, it's pretty simple. Once we put our sump pump into the basin with the check valve already on it, I got a piece of pipe, my second riser, put it on there. Don't cut it yet, just put you a piece on there that you know is probably longer than it needs to be. And then I dug my trench to my hole that you saw me drill over there in my gutter downspout. I then worked backwards from my hole, put my 45 into the hole of the discharge line on the gutter downspout, came back this way, ran me a piece to here, took my measurement found out the height that I needed to be for my second riser out of my check valve and then I made all my cuts and then I glued everything together and that's how you do it it's really simple Okay, now before the comments start that, man, for the price of, you just wasted a bunch of money. Stop. The cost of these two basins is the same cost as a 36-inch basin. Actually, they're cheaper. You can buy two of these for the price of one of those. So no money was wasted, okay? Anyway, YouTube's harsh, man. You guys are harsh. You know what's funny is, is that I used to be, well I still am, I'm not going to lie. I like to make comments that probably aren't the most um, constructive, but it's all in good fun, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has an opinion and a thought and they're free to share it. But anyway, let's move right along. So we got that cut, it looks like it was done at a factory, that's how good I am with my handy dandy grinder. So now I'm going to 
do a little modification right there where the pipe comes out so that uh, I can slide it over that and then we'll slide it in there and put our lid on and then we're gonna test this system. Five in there that water is just hitting the back wall and it's just forcing it out so what you have to do is get the water flowing in the direction of your pipe and you'll be fine so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put my 45 on there and then I got a slip 90 I'm gonna slide it in there glue it and then put this in there that'll sit in there sit in there like that and my water will go in the direction that my pipe is facing that way I don't get all that kickback from the pump so we should be good so let's do it okay now we gotta connect here and what we're gonna do is use a quick hub that'll allow us to slide this back and then slide onto our new piece that damn thing on there tighten these up put our silicone around there let it cure for a little bit and then we'll run the sump and see how she does I think we're gonna be good a couple of important things you have to have a dedicated power source to operate your sump pump you cannot running on an extension cord you can however it's not recommended you can buy sumps with different lengths of power cords this is a 15 foot power cord and the electrical outlet is going to be placed on that wall right there so it will reach so you need to take that into consideration make sure that your power source will reach the outlet so that's how you Assemble your sump pump and that's also how you install your sump pump and your sump pump basin so that you have a Yard drainage system. Just remember that uh, these types of systems are installed uh, Only whenever we have poor slope for the given property that we're working on Down here push the water all out just ran it if you remember originally we were gonna discharge it here unfortunately due to some irrigation lines we had to make some adjustments adjustments and it didn't allow the water to push out as good as I would have liked at this point so we extended it another 20 feet but yeah clients all happy he got him a real sump pump a 0.5 horsepower I know one-third horsepower Got him a real sump pump, so you know all the neighbors will have sump pump envy. So if you're gonna get you a sump pump, get you a man sump pump. You know what I'm saying?